More than half of all companies globally are family-owned or operated. Family businesses contribute 70% of the world's GDP and account for 65% of jobs. Their voices are important. Their stories must be told. Brought to you by the award-winning publication, Tharavat Magazine. This is the Family Business Voice with your host, Ramya Elagami. Jetwing, Sri Lanka's people-centric hospitality giant. For more than four decades, family-owned hospitality group Jetwing has shared Sri Lanka's unparalleled beauty with the world by booking itineraries and hosting visitors in their hotels. Jetwing's entrepreneurial journey from a single six-room hotel on a stretch of Negombo Beach to the nation's preeminent hospitality company is more than just serendipity, however. Their devotion to their people, both those in their employ as well as their rooms, has carried Jetwing through civil strife and economic uncertainty. Jetwing's owning family, the Kurais, have flourished in an industry where many others have faltered by investing in their most important resource, human potential. We sat down with Shiromal and Hiran Kurai, Jetwing's second generation leadership team, and talked about loyalty founder Herbert Kurai's legacy, and their hopes for Jetwing's next generation successors. Enjoy this episode with Shiromal and Hiram. It's always a little bit uh, strange, like you talk to this person, suddenly you're supposed to dive into a conversation you never met you before. So, <laughs> But it would be lovely for us to have a bit of an introduction from you to tell us a little bit like how you came to join the family business and also what your roles are today. That would be lovely. Okay, so I'll start. I'm the eldest. I'm an accountant by profession. So I worked in an advertising company, finance. And I think about 10 years after I, I, I was in finance position, I joined family business in the travel arm. We had two main arms, travel and hotel. So I, I joined the travel company. And yeah, so I've been there since now, I think almost 30 years. Wow. I've been the uh, company. And uh, so I, I worked as the managing director of the travel company and carried through uh, till this day, yeah. 30 years, that's incredible, wow. And in an industry that has changed so much in that time, right? Like Shirmal, I mean, it must have been incredible disruption of your industry, really, within the time that you've been uh, in charge. Like, what are the turning points that are in your mind that you saw happen for the company over those last 30 years? Yeah, so when I joined the company, it was already in that critical stage. I mean, the war was on and things were going down. And I mean, there have been lots of other issues, which Hiran will tell you that he, while he was working, things happened. But while I was there, it was just the war, mm-hmm. the civil war that we had. And then the bombs were going off, one of that. And we, so we've gone through a lot of challenges, a lot of chaos, uh, but we survived. And uh, so, yeah, I can think something like maybe the bomb that went off in the central bank, the airport got bombed. Uh, you know, a lot of things happen. Some of the places of interest, like uh, sacred places, and the Anuradhapura got also attacked. So, those all had impact on tourists coming into the country. And then we, there were times when we were not, then we had the tsunami which also took away a lot of the arrivals. And so there were times when we didn't have a single uh, arrival, which happened also after 21st April this year. But uh, yeah, we, we survived all of that and managed it. And see, one thing we didn't do is get rid of our staff, mm-hmm. uh, which is what a lot of companies do when there's a problem. They just try to reduce their cadre. Mm-hmm which is what our dad, uh, who founded the company, used to always tell us that, uh, especially for the travel company that I looked after, we don't have any assets other than a few vehicles. Mm -hmm. So our main asset is our our people. So we kind of, our assets walk in and walk out. You know, they walk in in the morning and they walk out at the end of the day. So therefore, we need to retain them. And uh, yeah, so that's what we did. And yeah, it has worked for us. Fantastic. And I'd love to uh, go a little bit deeper on that as well afterwards on the talent retention. Uh, it's a very interesting and I'm sure a difficult move also to to make like when you, you see the bottom line suffering from these external forces you can't influence, but you want to retain your people, which of course is the right thing to do, but a hard thing to do, I'm sure. So Hiran, maybe from your side as well, tell us your story. You followed in the footsteps of your elder sister very clearly 
big role uh, model okay. in your life. <laughs> he joined. Ah, okay. <laughs> I studied in America for four, three and a half years. And 1987, I graduated. And uh, when I came back, 87 to 89 were two of the worst years in Sri Lanka. Mm. You know, we had a northern war going on. And in the south also, we had uh, a radical uh, a political group uh, who was trying to disrupt the uh, normal life here. So it was a terrible time. And uh, I wasn't even keen on coming back, but my uh, father uh, insisted that I come back. So I came back because of him. And I just started working uh, with him from uh, then onwards with no experience, with uh, only a degree uh, in business management which was just a piece of paper, actually. Uh, so I had to learn everything uh, with him and a few other senior people. My dad had uh, working uh, with him at that time. So the company was uh, going through a very difficult time. 87 to 89 was a very rough time for us. And our dad, being the eternal optimist he was, even at that time, uh, uh, was investing, buying new properties, uh, you know, improving his existing uh, yeah. hotels and all of that. So, so it was, I mean, you know, he was good doing things completely against the management theory uh, that I had studied and read about because he was completely going uh, opposite to that, you know. Uh, he was just, uh, because he's a nice block of land, he'd buy it. So then when I asked him that I was uh, money, he said, no, no, you know, we will sort it out. And, uh, like that, he also, one of the first things he told me when I started working with him is, if money is due on a particular day, you are paid. Mm -hmm. You know, so the banks had tremendous uh, respect for him mm -hmm. and uh, he could borrow money because the banks knew that he would uh, always uh, pay back. Mm -hmm. what it, so for him, paying the banks, paying the staff and paying the suppliers was extremely important. I mean, you know, if a supplier gives us 30 days or 45 days credit, he makes sure that it's paid. So most suppliers, even though tourism was bad, would always supply us because they know that they'll get their money. Mm -hmm. you know, so that's what kept us going. And of course, he also maintained very good relations with the uh, two operators at that time. Mm -hmm. So they also helped our business. Uh, however difficult it was, uh, uh, with all the travel advisories and everything else, the operators continued to feature us and uh, promoted us. So that's how uh, I got into it and uh, the rest is history. So since 87 June, I'm working, so it's now 32 years. Wow, incredible. And both such a, such a stories, a lot of stories to tell, I'm sure, in those, uh, from those yes. decades. A lot of yeah. adventures, but the interesting now is to understand a little bit how you operate today as well. Like, so how do you operate together? Can you tell us a little bit more about how many people you currently employ as well, since we're going to be talking about talent and give us an idea of like the dimensions of the company and how you operate today? So we have two main companies, Jetwing Hotels Limited and Jetwing Travels Limited. Mm -hmm. Our dad passed away in 2008, June. And then uh, when he passed away, he hadn't decided who should be the chairman of the company, you know, because uh, he did, uh, unlike many other Asian parents, uh, he, he treated both of us equally. Mm. He gave both of us equal responsibility and we ran the company that way. I was more involved in hotels and she was more involved in travels. But uh, at that time, she decided that I should be the chairman. So I was chairman till last year, no? last year. October, I was chairman of both hotels and travels. But still, I focused my attention on hotels and she focused her attention on travels. Yeah. But with the transition happening, trying to get our children also into it, you know, all of that, which we'll go into later. So we decided to change the roles a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I still remain chairman of the two publicly quoted companies and the family owned assets of the hotel. And uh, she is now the chairman of the two main companies, Jetwing Hotels Limited and Jetwing yeah, Jet Travels Limited, which is a two uh, companies that is uh, you know, quite you know, out in the market. Yeah. 
So that's a management company. Okay. Other one is the asset owning asset company. Owning. Mm. Yes. This is such an interesting solution. And how is this going to now? You did this already with the anticipation on how this is going to trickle down to the third generation. Isn't that correct? So this is an anticipation of, may I just ask you how many family members are there? How many children are there in the third generation? Can you tell us? Yes. So uh, he has three boys and I have one boy. Okay. So two of uh, Hiran's sons are working in the company now okay. at the moment. Okay. So you have a nice pool of next-gen talent in front of you, like uh, whether they directly or indirectly are involved in the family business. Yeah. So tell us a little bit more. So we, as you know, we discovered you based on this particular move that you're making, which they call splitting the company in two, really. We have not, not split the company in two. Yeah. It was already established that way by our dad. Sure. Yeah. Right, because it, for, for, for business reasons, mm -hmm. because Jetwick Travels is, is a company which is uh, involved in uh, inbound hosting inbound tourists, uh, sending tourists out of Sri Lanka, uh, representing airlines, uh, representing two operators from different parts of the world, and, and Jetwick Travels works with non Jetwick hotels as well. Other hotels. Other hotels in Sri Lanka. Whereas Jetwick Hotels is a purely a management company which manages uh, assets owned by the family as well as assets not owned by the family. So it's, it's a purely a management company. So it's a services company that you have there. Yeah. Mm. It was set up that way due to necessity, mm. uh, but it had, uh, you know, still we both worked in work together, uh, but it, it was decided to move this way in order to, you know, facilitate a longer term you know, structure. Growth, yeah, of course. When you talk to your sons, like, does this make it easier for you to imagine them in operational roles in the company having this split? And do you feel like, are they going to be rotating between the two? Are they rotating between the two companies? Or is it like, you know, are you keeping them in one place to specialize? What have you done so far with the two that are already involved in terms of their training? Right. So the elder boy is 27 years old. And he's now, he studied in Singapore and in Australia, uh, hospitality management. And he's uh, now, we, we, have, uh, we have other senior directors of the company as well. You know, uh, there is a managing director who's a non-family member. Uh, there's, there are a few executive directors, uh, one non-family members again. So it's only the two of us in our generation. Senior management. And uh, so, so we have a French gentleman who's a director of hotel operations. Mm -hmm. And so my elder boy, who's 27, is now designated manager operations. So he works directly under the French guy, Jerome. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's his role at the moment, uh, mm -hmm. handling that's operations. About four years. Huh? No, Dimitri. Yeah. Uh, Dimitri is about four years now, the elder boy, uh, close to four years. So the second boy, Hashan, is will be 23 in March in September, and uh, he studied for two years economics in uh, California, and he came back. He, he worked as a management trainee, and our marketing manager suddenly left, so he showed an interest in marketing. So he's now handling uh, marketing uh, for Jetwing Hotels. So at the moment, what we thought is, assuming the other boy also comes back. Maybe he would uh, work in Jetwing Travels, mm -hmm. you know, because uh, it's a lot of work. I mean, you know, it's not, and also the the company does not rely purely on the two of us or the three of them or the four of them in the future. It's set up in such a way, with or without the Pure family, the company can go on. So it's such an um, interesting conversation, isn't it? This what happens to the non-family employees when family members join the company? So there's a school of thought that says, well, it gives the non-family employees a lot of confidence that there's continuity, right? Like that the family will take care of the business and that the family is still there. In other cases, there is a rivalry that starts building up that people feel like they might not be able to access the same jobs as the family members. Um, what has been the feedback that has reached you from the non-family employees when it came to integrating the next generation? And actually, 
it even applies to when you joined the company. I'm sure there were already non-family members involved, right? Like, so how does it compare when you joined? And also how does it compare when your sons joined? Like that feedback that you got from the other employees? So yeah, when I joined that the company I joined was very small. I think it had about six employees and it was a travel company. Uh, and there was a managing director of that company. And unfortunately, uh, the way I worked and the way he worked didn't really gel. Mm. And he decided to leave. Uh, and then he started his own company. Uh, and then since then, we moved places and all of that. So that, that's the current, that, that, is, that was how it was many years ago. So currently, if you are to talk about travels, yes, we do have a very good setup, a certain line and of very senior managers. But if uh, the youngest, my youngest nephew wishes to come and join the business because he's, he's uh, very uh, well uh, suited for that job because mm-hmm. it's, it's an outgoing job. You need to go out and entertain people. And, you know, it's, it's a more PR thing. And so he's got the right attitude for it. And if he does come, I think there's not going to be a problem because mm-hmm. he's still also very young. He's only 21, 21 now. Mm-hmm. So there is more time for him to come to a senior position. Mm-hmm. So until then, I think I'm sure the others will nurture him. The people who are at the next level, who in the next three, four years, who will take over the company, will definitely nurture him. So maybe in five or six years when he's ready to take a more senior, uh, responsible job, he, they, they'll all accept him. I, I don't have any problem with that. Mm. Okay, very interesting. So generally, I think like, you know, when you have so many employees as you do, I'm sure like talent management and attracting talent, whether it be from the family or non-family, so you've already done really well, 50% of the third generation is already in the company. So that's a good quota, right? Like, so uh, yeah. let's hope we get to 75. But like, I think that um, what's really interesting is that the bigger a company becomes, the talent management question becomes very different, right? Like, so you started out, Shiromal, when it was like, there's six people, and now you, you have like so many more, like a few zeros more that are reporting to you at this stage. What has changed in your view of how you want to be seen as an employer brand with Jetwing? Like, you know, do you discuss this between you? Like what is important to create in terms of a workspace to attract the right talent and to retain the right talent? Is this a big discussion? Yeah, of course we do, because for us, the people are the most important. And uh, we both companies, both travels and hotels, we've not had a problem uh, attracting people and also retaining people. Mm-hmm. One is to attract, the other is to retain. Some of our managers, uh, you know, have only worked with us, not worked anywhere else, you know. So they, they are really homegrown management, and they feel, even though they are non shareholders of the business, they work as if they own the business. So they mm-hmm. they take an entrepreneurial interest in the business. Mm-hmm. Uh, so which actually we are blessed with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, most of our uh, managers think like that. When they join the organization, just a handful, I mean, I, I can just count the numbers uh, on my fingertips that have left as managers, you know. So, mm-hmm. so we had a problem. I mean, you know, we maintain... We are loyal to them as much as they are loyal to us. Mm-hmm. So we look at that. We, of course, look at their, uh, you know, ability to work, their, their potential. If, if, we, if we have somebody whom we feel does not integrate after we've hired them, we wouldn't continue with them. We would, you know, separate uh, at the, you know, between the first six months or a year rather than have a prolonged uh, agony that mm-hmm. maybe that person does not enjoy working with us. And we don't enjoy working with them. So we are fairly upfront in saying that. But once they, once they become complete uh, jet-wing uh, loyalists and then they, they enjoy working and then continue enjoying till uh, some have passed the age of retirement and then they still continue <laughs> to work with the, with the same motivation and the you know, enthusiasm they had 15, 20 years ago. That's an incredible, very uplifting culture, it sounds like, that you have created inside your companies. The technology that is used by the consumer, particularly when it comes to like travel choices, has changed radically in the time that you both have been active. But this has also impacted the way people behave at work. So people view their own work, etc. So, for instance, I mean, I guess today 
you have a lot of your employees tweeting, Facebooking, Instagramming about their day to day at Jetwing, which before never used to be the case, of course. So this is also led to concern for certain companies in terms of managing their reputation in the face of the fact that employees can today, of course, you know, uh, leak information or share whatever they want with the outside world without it being within the control of the company. Have you got any policies in place where you're like, you know, we need to, especially because I'm just asking this because I'm aware that you being so dependent on tourism and tourism being such a volatile thing in Sri Lanka right now due to the security issues, you know, that added that added uh, problem with like reputation management. I was just wondering whether you've had any policies put in place with regards to how employees deal with the brand to the outside world? We don't have a policy as such, but we do have a marketing team. We have a social media team and all that, where the corporate communications, uh, both marketing related as well as uh, other issues are handled uh, with regard to reputation management. Again, there are the hotel related managers mm. as well as the marketing team monitor what's being said and done, uh, what, what, the, what the people are talking about, our hotels, our services uh, is being monitored. Uh, we ourselves, if, uh, uh, we are contactable on, uh, on most of these social media networks as well. So if something goes wrong, we ourselves get the information yeah. straight away. Yeah. So, so manage it that way. Uh, but we haven't restricted any of our associates from speaking their minds out uh, independently. But if they are talking anything about the company, uh, then of course, uh, good or bad, then we will. Uh, so far, it has been good. So, yeah. so far, that's excellent. Yeah. That's very good news. <laughs> so um, we're very proud to have a family business from Sri Lanka. So thank you very much for taking the time. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Family Business Voice. Subscribe to our channels now on iTunes, TuneIn, Stitcher or Spotify to be notified of our weekly episodes.